In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a multi-sampled instrument using the ESX24. And we're going to have two samples spread across the keyboard of the flute, but it will also have another two samples which are staccato notes. So I'll have some long sustained notes, which will loop, and staccato notes as well, and we'll use velocity switching to be able to change between them. So let's record some notes on the flute. The recording levels are crucial because you've got your the quality of your sample will only be as good as your recording. I'm actually just recording through the Macintosh microphone, so this is just quick and dirty but uh, you should record as well as you can. So I'll get the level. That looks okay. All right, let's record something. Okay, I've recorded my sounds and let's zoom in and have a look at them. Now, normally what I do is I trim them at this point just to get rid of the stuff I don't want. I can trim them in the sample editor later, but just to get rid of confusion, let me, if I ever done that, oops. Yes, I have overdone that. Okay, trim off there, trim off here. There. This is just because when you start doing lots of samples, everything gets very complicated and you can easily get confused. So I just try and make everything as simple as quickly as I can. Let's delete that, delete that, delete this, delete this and this training edge at the beginning. So let's zoom out and let's add some more tracks so that each sample will be on their own track. Let's zoom so we can see everything. All right, so we'll put this one down here and this one down here And here we should actually label everything, but I'm not going to do that now. I'll make it all go to the very beginning of the track. This is just so that we can get our basic raw samples vaguely there. This is still not very good. That one we've got a few bit of, bit of gaps at the beginning, but uh, let's fix that. Oh, I see. Okay, let's. Uh, we could listen to them, but you should listen and check that they're 100% right, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go for it now, otherwise the video will be too long. Now, we should label these all and decide what note they're going to be. I've decided this is going to be D3. D3. Now, what I do these days is I take these. These are all in one file at the moment, if you would look in the project. Oh, there's the old take. Kill the old one. Oh. When all of those sounds are currently in that file, what I do is I tend to bounce it in place now, and I give it a name which has got the key, the root key of the sample where I want it to be playing back at the proper pitch on the keyboard. I put that in the name, so it's FL Flute Long. So that's a descriptive name, and this will be, if I bounce this one in place, and which will normalize it also, this will be D3 Flute Staccato. I could have called it short, I guess. And this is going to be the higher note. Let's double check. Yeah, so that's D4. Bounce this in place. D4, flute, long. And we 
should have this last one, which was going to be D4 flute staccato. Okay, so they're all bounced in place. Now, if you look at it, they're the original recordings. They are all in one file, but now I've bounced these out to individual files and then normalized so that we're trying to get as good a uh, dynamic range as we can. If you look in our folder now, the audio files are all got their own separate files. Okay, so now we've got all that. That's all happy. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to delete them all from the project because now I'm going to put them into the ESX24. I can actually keep the original. I'll just delete all of those. When we put them into the ESX24, if you want to fine tune the files in the sample editor, it doesn't like it when they're actually in the arrange window. Okay, let's now make a ESX24 track come up with an ESX24 which I've made a mono one but that's okay when we have no sound in it it just plays sine waves now to put the sounds actually in build our sample we need to go to the edit window which is here and I can load multiple samples here I've got a whole bunch of them. Here they are. This one, all of those, add. Okay, so they're all going to be there. And then when it asks, it, we've come up with some options. And because we've put the root key of the audio file in the name, we can auto map it. That can do some of the work for us. So when we do that, we find we have the top flute there and the low flutes down here with a break here. So We've split into two zones, and it's picked the halfway point there, which is G3, to swap between the lower sample and the upper sample. You can fine-tune that. In fact, often when I'm recording things, I'll often only transpose them up and down like a minor third or even less, but for a quick demo, we've just got two. Now, the problem with this is we're playing both sounds at once. We're playing the staccato sample and the long sample at once. We don't want to do that. So what we can do is, let's just turn off a few of these things so we've got a bit of space. And we want to turn the velocity range on. So if we turn the velocity range on here, each different zone can have a different velocity range. And I want the... Uh, long notes to be played when I have uh, lower velocities, say below 99, and the staccato sounds playing when it's above 99. I'll do the same thing here. I just randomly chose the number 99. So now when I play low velocity, we get the sustained sound. High velocity, we get the short sound. So So the velocity is determining which of the two samples has been played, the staccato sample or the low sample. Now the loop has got, or the long sound dies. If I play the low sound, it stops. So what we want to be able to do is loop it. So we turn on our looping here, go to the loop window and say D3, I want you to loop. If I play it now, Yes, it's, it's looping happily, but it's looping back all the way to the beginning. I could manually adjust it there, but that is hard. What I'll do, I'll go here and open it in the sample editor. And the sample editor comes up under here. Let's minimize that. Get rid of this. 
and make this big and down here you can see where the loop points are and you can see the details of the wave and I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to loop it down here to the end because it's relatively um, uh, stable. So I could just drag the beginning and end points of this green indicator here. But what I normally do is I, oops, I select where I want it to be looping. And then I go to the edit and go selection, make that the sample loop. And then it will do it. nasty glitch there so let's just by trial and error move it around a bit I it's best to try and make it so that it's very nasty glitch I could do crossfade looping to try and smooth that out but let's see how good we can do it now without it I wonder if my zero crossing oh yeah they are it's on. So let's keep experimenting. Ugly. Let's try here. Out there. Okay, that's pretty good. So now I've got that done, I can write that into the audio file and when we come up with the sample now the begin and end points are now in the file if I want to I can smooth it out even more by doing some crossfade let's make it crossfade over a thousand samples still a bit of a nasty loop but that's okay for now and I should then do the same thing for my other long sample which I'm not going to do now in the interest of time now one problem with this is that because we've got the velocity controlling which sample to play and we've also got it controlling the level it means when I play quietly to get the long note The dynamics are a bit strange because the level could be a bit low and the staccato is always loud. So what I often tend to do is quickly limit this. So I'm more using my velocity for the which sample to use. Now you can spend a lot of time and uh, use other sneaky tricks to make it uh, much more sophisticated, um, but for a lot of the quick and dirty bits of sampling which you tend to do when you're doing your own sampling uh, it's probably not worth the time and effort to use all of the nice extra features we've got things like groups which uh, we're not going to actually use in this video uh, you can build very complex sample sets but uh, normally if I need to do something for myself I do the quick and the dirty one and these are the sort of techniques that I found most useful most of the time okay that's the end